Okay, thank you. Let me make it in a PowerPoint mode. I don't know it's, uh, okay, finally, oh gosh. Hello, my name is Rubina Shaheen, and today I'm gonna to present uh, about uh, wildfire in Southern California. I'm going to focus on San Diego because uh, I had uh, the experience going through this wildfire and helping uh, people in, who were really suffering from um, smoke as well as they lost their properties. So it was really a very uh, emotional experience for me. And uh, also I'm atmospheric chemist and that's why I study different changes in the atmosphere. In this regard, I would like to share that CO2, we know that it has caused an increase in temperature and as a result, we experienced drought and uh, consequently it leads to many fires in California. As you can see from this graph, it has increased and the cost also has increased uh, with time due to the deadly wildfire. And uh, here, uh, the wildfire not only cause uh, damage to the properties, they also affect the health as well as uh, the ozone that's produced during the wildfire, it damages crop and also it enter into the lungs because it's a toxic gas. And this is the way it affects at multiple level. And when we plan for the wildfire remedies, we don't take into consideration the cost of long-term um, uh, patient care. And that I think is very important. And here I have plotted all for one whole year of data for 2014 and it's a correlation matrix and as you can see when we plot temperature relative humidity pressure and ozone there doesn't seem to be really specific correlation except with the pressure and a little bit with the temperature and uh, this is the entire data and i took uh, co and nitric oxide because these are the most important pollutant to not only fossil fuel burning but also during the biomass burning and then i decided okay if i may um, divide the data below 40% relative humidity because I know Santa Ana events are those that uh, mostly trigger the wildfire. So I decided to tease out the different information from this data. And here, as you can see in this, during uh, Santa Ana events, the temperature is really high and relative humidity reaches below 20% as it's like a bone dry. And the, uh, also, the wind, they are changing from very stagnant winds, 50 to 125 mile, and that caused all the ambers to fly away and cause much more damage. And when we did simple quadratic analysis, it looks like that there is not so strong correlation. So I turned to scikit-learn, and then I decided to first check the simple parameters with two, three, and then finally I evolved the uh, comp complex um, you know, model with the scikit-learn and it's a multivariable analysis and it has seven parameters, the composition of the gases, particulate matter, temperature, pressure, um, and wind speed, the relative humidity also. And in the, as you can see, it's a really good prediction with regard to the most of the days, except few days when there is a very high fire uh, uh, at, at the uh, maximum level. And those are the days that uh, somehow is not able to predict uh, ozone level. But if we compare it back with the other quadratic equation, we, you see the difference between 20 to 30 ppb. And it's, uh, here, if we go to the, uh, our uh, predictive model, it's only five to maximum eight ppb. And so I think according to the atmospheric chemistry, this is really a great uh, accomplishment because you cannot predict ozone uh, simply with the few variables. It, it depends on the solar intensity and other parameter as well. And as you can see in some of the days that there are uh, prediction is higher and those are the days where the ozone uh, uh, is washed off due to the rain and uh, so we have a clean weather. Then I plotted all the past uh, um, precipitation data and also the number of uh, days when the rain, um, uh, rainy days. And what you can see that over here, that this is, uh, I think is a 
area where one has to be really cautious. These are the days where one can have higher fire intensity. And uh, I think it's a pretty good uh, way to identify based on the amount of rain. Sorry, the <laughs> access is cut down. And um, with that, I would like to say that ozone is a really very toxic uh, gas and it enters into your body causing multiple uh, type of damages to DNA and also uh, it also affects uh, uh, respiratory health. And uh, I would like to thank Jenny and all my colleagues for their wonderful uh, help during the coursework. And uh, there are so many other parameters that I checked, but I, for the sake of uh, time, I decided to just show only one parameter. And uh, as ozone is uh, causing long-term effects, so I decided to focus on this. Thank you.